Deep beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a disruptive wave is brewing, a pattern of turbulence which can appear out of nowhere and blindside us in an instant, forcing every living being to adapt or fade away. Once it rises to the surface, the destructive nature of this change can potentially cause massive amounts of floods, droughts, diseases, cold snaps, and unusual weather patterns, forcing vast numbers of people, as well as animals, to leave their homes and relocate. This assertive force has wreaked havoc in history several times before, changing millions of lives forever. And the name of this fierce change is El Nino. So what is El Nino and why does it carry such devastating potential? Join us as we understand the true danger of this weather phenomenon. El Nino, translated to the boy in Spanish, is a very peculiar weather phenomenon. Our ancestors first observed it during the 16th century and found that it can lead to floods and droughts throughout various regions of our Mother Earth, as well as global increases in temperatures disrupting life as a whole. It mainly affects the water in the ocean, heating it from 32.4 to 32.9 degrees Fahrenheit more than the average temperatures. The way that it spreads is fairly understandable as it originates from the East Central Pacific Ocean, and this makes it extremely dangerous for developing countries built on shorelines as well as marine life. The abrupt changes in overall climate and the sharp heating of water force every living organism in its vicinity to adapt in a very short amount of time, and calling that an incredibly difficult task is an understatement. However, what most people don't know is that this is not the only weather phenomenon to affect planet Earth. In fact, El Nino is just one phase of this climate phenomenon. There are two other phases of the same phenomenon, one which is a complete opposite of El Nino, known as La Nina, and the other one which is a neutral state. During La Nina, which is translated to the girl in Spanish, the water temperature begins to cool down from 41 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this still holds some catastrophic effects for our blue planet. Severe rainstorms, stronger hurricanes, and floods can be observed during this cycle, mainly in the United States and Canada. As we mentioned earlier, these three phases are linked together into one major climate phenomenon, broadly termed the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The El Nino phase usually lasts about 9 to 12 months, while La Nina lasts 1 to 3 years, so it's safe to say that these phenomena are not short-term. El Nino and La Nina might be extremely devastating, but they still have some signs which give us the possibility to catch them in their early development. Their formation takes place under a very unusual process, something which can be easily distinguished. Under normal conditions, trade winds move from a high-pressure zone to a low-pressure zone from east to west. These winds cause the movement of warm water towards the Asian countries and Australia, and as a result of this, colder water rises in the east, mainly towards the coasts of South America. Now, this holds a positive effect, mainly because this cold water is teeming with various fishes because of its high nutrient content. This process of rising cold, nutrient-rich water is called upwelling, and because of this, the continued regulation of ocean temperature goes on in an endless loop. However, if this cycle breaks, El Nino or La Nina begins to form. Now, during El Nino, the winds which contribute to the upwelling process grow weak, causing water in the Pacific Ocean to heat up rapidly, even in much colder areas. Another effect of the weakening of wind formation causes a change in rain cloud formation as well, disrupting the natural weather phenomenon around the world. As a result, the tropics have to bear heavy rainfall and flooding, while the western region is forced to endure an increase in the number of droughts. If we look back in history, we would find that the regions bordering the Pacific Ocean have to bear the brunt of this phenomenon the most. During the 19th century, approximately 30 to 60 million people died due to the severe droughts and floods which caused havoc in India, China, and Brazil. Moving on to the 20th century, harvests from Western countries were brutally affected as well, and a noticeable drop was studied in the population of animals, especially sea lions. 
All of this was caused by 26 recorded cases of El Nino during the 20th century. The economies of South American countries like Peru and Ecuador rely majorly on fishing as well as fertilizer production. But during El Nino, the decrease in upwelling causes a sharp decline in both these industries, significantly damaging the economy. And an even worse threat looms over Indonesia, Australia, and other eastern regions. Water bodies significantly dry up, causing droughts, a decrease in land fertility, and a drop in the overall health of animals and people. El Nino also affects Antarctica, where shelf glaciers begin to melt due to a decrease in the upwelling of colder water. Looking at the European countries, El Nino significantly affected the production of crops, which could have contributed towards the French Revolution during the 18th century. Moving on to the 19th century, this phenomenon caused three severe famines throughout various Asian and European countries. The most recent records of these extremely dangerous oscillation patterns, namely El Nino and La Nina, were noticed during 2015 and 2016. El Nino in 2016 was the hottest one ever recorded in the last 50 years, causing widespread hunger around the globe, seriously affecting over 60 million people. Let's look at different regions of the world and what their population had to suffer through during that devastating cycle. Australia experienced severe drought, especially in the northern and eastern parts. Due to the excessively dry climate, wildfire season had an early start and a total of 125 fires raged on throughout the continent. Wildfires were also recorded in areas where they used to be extremely uncommon, like the swamps and rainforests of Tasmania. Worrying effects were also noticed on the coasts as well. Much greater cases of coral bleaching, a phenomenon where the corals turn white and are extremely susceptible to perish, were observed. Worst of all, the extremely dry spring and fall season of 2016 caused very low harvests, which had a huge effect on the economy of the continent. Next, the Asian region took a heavy blow as well. Large-scale fires in Indonesia worsened the air quality in Singapore, Malaysia, and other neighboring countries. Vietnam and Thailand were not exempt from the destructive effect either. A sharp decline in rice production was noticed there, which is an essential commodity for their international trade. Northern regions of China faced droughts while the southern region experienced heavy rainfall and floods. And as another effect of the global decrease in the production of goods, India decreased its supply of sugar, cotton, rice, and corn. The United States and the European countries were somehow exempt from severe effects, but still, a high amount of precipitation was observed in various regions of the UK and the US. Moving on to South America, around 5,000 people in Peru lost their homes due to heavy floods and landslides, and over 150,000 people were evacuated from Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. Another devastating blow was dealt to Argentina in the form of massive locust swarms, which depleted major amounts of agricultural reserves in the country. The people of Colombia experienced droughts, due to which a famine started to spread and a total of 2.3 million people needed humanitarian aid from the UN. St. Lucia even declared a state of emergency during all of this. And finally, due to decreased crop production in Brazil, a sharp increase in coffee and sugar prices were observed throughout the world. Arguably, one of the worst effects was noticed in the African continent. Food production fell by a staggering 6 million tons, and in some parts of Zimbabwe, 75% of harvest was considered lost. In Ethiopia, around 10 million people needed humanitarian aid, and about 458,000 children suffering from acute malnutrition were observed and treated. Diseases like cholera, Rift Valley fever, and malaria also spread rampantly throughout the continent. Needless to say, the extremely destructive effects of El Nino can be noticed throughout every part of our entire planet, making it a global catastrophe. And in order to make sure we are best prepared for the future, some predictions have been made by experts. It is expected that the next El Nino is supposed to start in early 2024, giving us a small window to prepare for it. 
According to Dylan Amaya, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration researcher, we might observe new global temperature records in 2024. This can be because of an extraordinarily long La Nina period experience recently, causing a lot of built-up heat in the ocean which will be released in the next El Nino period. Firstly, the ocean temperature will possibly rise to 35 degrees Fahrenheit and could reach much higher than before. Secondly, early fires could possibly ravage the Australian continent again due to the excessive increase in climate temperature. Thirdly, the South American region could suffer from a sharp increase in diseases such as malaria, dengue fever, and the Zika virus. The African continent would be severely affected by these diseases as well, and in addition, major rainforests such as the Amazon may experience droughts which will lead to decreased vegetation, causing less carbon dioxide to be absorbed from the atmosphere. And finally, northern European countries will experience a swift, cold and dry winter, while southern Europe will experience increased precipitation. Global food shortage is expected this time as well, just like most countries struggled during the 2015 to 2016 era. In the big picture, we can expect an increase in global temperatures, disruptive weather patterns and famine throughout the major regions of the world. This particularly bleak forecast of the future should act as a signal for us to prepare ourselves for the harsher moments to come and should act as a wake-up call for us as a species to come together and help our environment when it so desperately needs us to. Thank you for watching.